Surprisingly, the sprawling fantasy world of Tolkien is coming to TV thanks to Amazon Prime Video's series adaptation of the Lord of the Rings franchise, with a prequel series called The Ring of Power. However, some fans are starting to worry that Amazon's Lord of the Rings, The Ring of Power may stray too far from Tolkien's writings after releasing a teaser and character posters, but these alterations may actually be excellent for the series. First up, will The Rings of Power ruin Lord of the Rings? The planned Amazon series has been kept under wraps, but the trailer, which noticeably resembles Jackson's original Lord of the Rings movies, teased key plot points that have alarmed some token readers because of how the original material seems to have evolved. These modifications, however, are advantageous for the series and shouldn't be viewed as a setback for the coming series. The Rings of Power is right not to try to duplicate the original material exactly, because it takes into account how adaptations have varied from Tolkien's writings in the past. Many fans' main worries about the upcoming series seem to be the alteration of Tolkien's history and the creation of new characters. The studio stated that it owns the rights to the appendices from the Lord of the Rings series and The Hobbit, contrary to rumors that the Amazon series will be an adaptation of Tolkien's The Silmarillion. The Rings of Power won't be the first adaptation of Tolkien's writings to change it, and Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, Peter Jackson, and the authors, Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens, used a similar compressed timeline in which Frodo departs the Shire within a year after receiving the ring from Bilbo, as opposed to the 17 years that The Hobbit spends in Bag End in the books. The adjustments made prioritize the movie's pacing. The chronological alteration ensured that the movie didn't lose interest or momentum rather than waiting with Frodo while he determined what to do. So, what is the Lord of the Rings prequel about? According to Payne and McKay, the creation of the rings, the ascent of the Dark Lord Sauron, the epic saga of Menor, and the last alliance of elves and men are all significant themes in the Rings of Power. According to Wadham, the movie is set a millennium before what people know about the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings. It follows a diverse collection of older people who are all trying to further their interest, often at the expense of others. The series will display an era in which great powers were forged, kingdoms rose to glory and fell to ruin, and unlikely heroes were tested. Also, hope hung by the tiny of threads, and one of the greatest villains that ever flowed from Tolkien's pen threatened to cover all of the world in darkness will all be portrayed. The narrative follows a cast of characters as they are pressured to embrace the long-feared return of evil from its relative peacetime beginning. As the plot lays the foundation for what is to come in the following millennium, the show will travel from the Misty Mountains to the elf capital of Linden to the island kingdom of Minor. Although the story is set in the well-known but vast Middle-earth, Elrond and Galadriel's presence there serves as the story's primary link to the books and movies. Next, what characters are in Rings of Power? The last alliance of elves and men was established in the novels by High King Gilgalad, the elven monarch of the Oldor, and the Minorian warrior Elendil. Markella Cavanaugh portrays Nori Brandyfoot in Lord of the Rings Ring of Power. According to co-showrunner J.D. Payne, Celebrimbor will be a significant character in the plot. He is the elf craftsman Sauron tricked into working on the Rings of Power and is extremely enigmatic. From the Khazad Doom Kingdom of the Dwarves, which is depicted in ruins in Peter Jackson's The Fellowship of the Ring, comes Prince Durin IV. Disa is a princess of the dwarves and the first female dwarf to appear in Tolkien's fantasy series. A second character created for the series is Erendir, a sylvan elf played by Ismail Cruz Cordova. Another brand new character is Halbrand, a mortal exile trying to escape his past. Young leader and architect Elrond, a politically ambitious half-elf, will become well known in the elven capital of Linden. Bronwyn is a healer and single mother, living in Turharad, a human community south of Gondor and Mordor. Theo, the son of Bronwyn, will also be one of the displayed characters and Minor native named Isildur, who will ultimately free Sauron of the One Ring. One of the Hobbit ancestors, Eleanor Brandyfoot, is also a new character. And now, who are the cast in Rings of Power? The show's ensemble cast includes both popular and unfamiliar characters, and it is said to juggle the narratives of 22 stars. Aragorn, played by Viggo Mortensen, and other mortal characters are unlikely to appear due to the period. However, immortal elves like Elrond are welcome. Hugo Weaving has handed Robert Aramay the role of the Lord of Rivendell for the Rings of Power. Galadriel, the ethereal elven queen made famous by Kate Blanchett's portrayal in the Peter Jackson film trilogy, is one of the series' protagonists. Her younger self will be portrayed in the series by Morfid Clark. The 22-member cast will also be augmented by new talents, such as Ismael Cruz Cordova, an American actor of Puerto Rican descent as the sylvan elf Arendir. Sophia Namvit, a well-known South African actress, presenter, and producer as the dwarven princess Disa, and Owen Arthur, a Welsh 
actor, who has appeared in a number of British television programs as the underground prince Durin IV. The cast for The Rings of Power is still being finalized, but it promises to be an engaging and exciting show with plenty of familiar faces. Stay tuned for more information as it becomes available. So where are the other Rings of Power during Lord of the Rings? The One Ring's fate is given the highest stakes in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but where are the other Rings of Power throughout the story? Yes, there were. While the One Ring is the focus of the story, there are other Rings of Power that play important roles in the events of the trilogy. Galadriel gives a brief history of the creation of each of the 20 Rings of Power in the opening scene of the Fellowship of the Ring, emphasizing more obviously the One Ring into which Sauron poured his brutality, hatred, and his ambition to dominate all existence. The location of these Rings of Power is occasionally unclear in Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings trilogy films, despite the fact that they are an essential aspect of Middle-earth's history and influence Third Age events. Some elf rings, like Narya, are concealed in plain sight, while others outside Galadriel's prologue are never again referenced in the first three books. Although not explicitly stated in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, canonically, the seven dwarven rings of power's fates have long since been decided. As of the start of the Fellowship of the Rings, the best movie in the trilogy, the Dark Lord Sauron owns three of the dwarven rings, the last of which was taken directly from Thorn and Oakenshield near the end of the Second Age. The nine rings of power given to the kings of men are the easiest to trace in the Lord of the Rings, with each ring attached to its respective Nazgul, three rings for the elven kings under the sky, and even for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone, nine for mortal men doomed to die, and one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne. And finally, what do fans think about the Lord of the Rings? There is no doubt that Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings films represented a revolutionary effort in cinema, but what records did they break? Here are some of the records Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings films broke, along with a list of those they still hold. For the majority of the 20th century, attempts to adapt Tolkien's Middle Earth fantasy epic from the page to the screen had been underway, with animated attempts that failed to match the grandeur and scale of the classic novels. The Lord of the Rings trilogy had enormous popularity, and these critically acclaimed box office giants pushed the envelope in terms of special effects, motion capture, battle scenes, and the construction of a fascinating fantasy world. The Lord of the Rings' journey to Mount Doom consequently set a number of records, which is not surprising. Given that The Lord of the Rings was a massive three-picture project, it is to be expected that some of Frodo's record-breaking accomplishments pertain to the entire series, rather than just one particular film. Peter Jackson's six films, which received 475 awards out of 800 nominations at all ceremonies, are the most honored film series in history between The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. The Oscars, on the other hand, stand in for the apex of cinematic excellence, and Middle-earth had a significant impact on the Academy's record books. Once more, accounting for all six films, Jackson's epic series holds the record for the most Oscar nominations and wins for a film series with 17 out of 37. And that's a wrap. We've come to the end of this video. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on the post notifications so that you get updates when we post our videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.